Thanks very much. Uh, so uh, I'm Assistant Professor of Architecture with Digital Media at the University of Thessaly. I teach across uh, different levels of architecture, first year until even PhD students. But uh, in the lecture today, I will focus mainly on the first year um, education. So um, we are co-authoring this paper with my colleagues, Yorgos Kalauzis and Alexandros Evstathiadis. So uh, the paper describes a studio-based project for first-year architecture students that took place at the University of Thessaly in Greece as part of the curriculum for the introduction to digital media. The project uh, is part of a foundation course for computer-aided design that uh, will follow in the subsequent uh, semesters and it aims to prepare students for understanding 3D space, representation techniques, while introducing them to digital tools and image editing. So architectural education in most universities comprises of design studios, architectural history, theory classes, and a series of courses targeted on design tools and methodologies together also with building technology. The above are scattered across the curriculum in a way that courses cross-inform each other and students obtain a global overview of the architectural discipline getting prepared for the future career as architects. So more specifically, digital design media and computer-aided design in most universities are taught in the form of seminars with the aim to equip the students with tools not only for architectural representation, but also for design thinking. Such courses may also involve model making and digital fabrication, among other design tools and media. However, in the last two decades, computer-aided design was introduced in the academic curriculum of architecture, and it has been observed that the creativity and formal experimentation of students in early stages of their studies was heavily constrained by their knowledge of the respective design tools. So the projects of the students comprised mainly of, let's say, easy shapes, um, simple geometric volumes that they could handle with the basic knowledge of CAD tools. So with the aim to encourage uh, formal experimentation and go a little bit beyond uh, solid primitives, we designed a foundation course for computer-aided design, which is purposely uh, combining analog and digital tools in order to introduce students to architectural representations while also triggering artistic reasoning and creativity. The aim of the course is to prepare students for um, computer-aided design, but it is addressing a relatively wide spectrum of uh, digital media. So we were covering from video editing, digital presentations, but also wanted to familiarize students with the expressive practice of sculpture to offer technical knowledge about non-destructive image editing and even storytelling through storyboards and architectural narratives. Digital technologies have uh, significantly transformed the professional practice over the last two decades. And in consequence, architectural education institutes have strived to keep up with these changes by incorporating courses of digital tools into the curriculum. However, there is still an open debate on how and when architecture students should be introduced to digital technologies. Literature review reveals a great wealth of teaching protocols for first year architecture students. One approach is to introduce uh, digital tools early on through mandatory or selective courses. And an advantage of this approach is that students acquire digital soft and hard skill sets at an early stage of their education and they become familiar with uh, the software and hardware that they will use throughout their professional career. However, opposing pedagogical approaches criticize the infusion of curriculums with CAD courses at the beginning of undergraduate programs. Digital technologies are accused of constraining the creativity and spatial exploration of first-year students due to the knowledge gap and software limitations. 
Hands-on projects, on the other hand, can aid students build a solid perception of space, scale, hierarchy, and internal relations, while they develop comprehension for the materiality and constructability of physical objects. So uh, the studio brief was designed, uh, is based in a series of learning theories that range from project-based learning, constructivism, and, construction, and constructionism, requiring the students' active involvement to construct physical models and use digital tools for image processing. So the initial stage of this project relies on pure design principles and artistic criteria. Students work with extruded polystyrene, a material that they can easily cut, carve, or sculpt, and employ a variety of additive and subtractive processes. So polystyrene is a lightweight material. Uh, it can be very easily used by novices in architectural motor making with the use of hot wire cutter or hand cutter. It is very cheap and easy to source, therefore allowing for several iterations of design modifications, trial and error, and experimentation. The main requirement for this stage is to experiment with geometry and topological transformations so that the models display a clear three-dimensional character with convex and concave areas, which will later evolve into external and internal spaces. The models are photographed from various viewpoints, often leading to real-time discovery of counterintuitive spatial configurations by, let's say, turning a model upside down and further understanding the play of volumes and spaces. So the last stage of this design process involves the editing of the model images to create architectural collages of the envisioned spaces. And this is the most challenging part of the design process, as the students will need to source different textures, either from online databases or through photography of real scale buildings, and proceed to the reskin of the models that they photographed yeah, with new textures. So basically, the physical model will dictate the massing of the building with a digital collage mainly focusing on the building skin. And there comes the title of the presentation. So particular emphasis is also placed on the correction of perspective through tools that are inherent to image editing, uh, the notion of scale, volume, subdivision of surfaces, light and shadow. So these are some of the examples from the student projects. These images correspond to the polystyrene images that you saw before. Maybe you remember some of the forms. It's basically a 2D process on a photograph of a 3D object. It's interesting to see that some students also opted for a more atmospheric image by using these image editing tools. So some of the conclusions, the design studio revealed that first, students, first year students were more capable to think with their hands to create 3D forms than to use uh, orthographic drawings to represent a three-dimensional idea. And their creativity was not constrained by their knowledge about sketching, about representation techniques, perspective drawings, axonometrics, or even CAD. So the initial stage of uh, this intuitive artistic practice appeared to expand the boundaries of um, uh, the, the forms, yeah, the formal repertoire. Uh, it was seen that uh, students that completed this uh, introductory propedeutic course on digital media, in the years that followed, they were more prepared to comprehend geometry in a kind of environment. They could easily understand solid editing, perspective and axonometric representations, and also a series of concepts that would relate to, le to rendering, like texture mapping or uh, light shadow reflection and other attributes of materials. Um, when each of these topics emerged in later courses, CAD 1 and CAD 2 courses, the students could easily refer to their previous experience with analog media. And they were not uh, limited by the computer skill or programmatic requirements. 
and we, we, we witness an, uh, an unprecedented formal um, repertoire which frequently tends to rationalize in the next years when they start to deal with floor plans and sections and go more, let's say, um, dealing with the real reality of architecture. So students learned about the importance of light, shadow, scale, and atmosphere in an architectural visualization before even being introduced to rendering techniques. So among of the benefits of this exploratory approach is that the students learn to train their aesthetic criteria and design standards before they actually learn the tools to do it, before they learn the tools to implement all of these. And uh, this leads to the quest for, um, let's say, high design quality and ambition once they do master the digital skills. They learn to mix different design methods and freely experiment even if they don't know what the end result will be. And this facilitates open-ended design processes and emergent results. So in the paper, you will see some of the bibliographical references. And that's interesting to see that we can find, let's say, prominent figures of education of the past, like Josef Albers from the Bauhaus, but also contemporary scientists that point out the importance of CAD courses in architectural education, and also researchers who advocate about the benefits of experiential learning and take a critical look at digital technologies mainly with regards to the time and optimal circumstances within the curriculum that students can comprehend and really benefit from CAD instruction in order to actively engage in the process of new knowledge acquisition in an exploratory fashion, avoiding teacher-centered software tutorials and encouraging their active participation. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention.